Hi everyone, and welcome to the review of the Fractal Define R6. We finally see some tempered glass. There's a lot of room for radiators. Get yourself comfy. So, yes, I do have a white one. And yes, I do have a black one, but there is also a gunmetal one as well that you uh, will need to keep in mind when we start talking about colors and stuff later on. Um, really, I think it's probably best that we get in and get busy. So as always, it's a tradition for us to start at the top and at the front. And uh, you've got the very familiar looking um, IO panel at the front of the R6 where you do get your power button and your reset button and you've got your headphones and you've got your USB 2s and your USB 3s. But you can get an upgrade panel for this if you would like USB 3.1. So you get one with a little USB-C connection just over here. It's an optional upgrade uh, if you want it. So what they've done is they've kept the base model down, kept the price down. And if that's something that you will utilize, which let's face it, there aren't exactly many USB 3.1 devices out there at the moment, but if you've got something that will and you want one, you can just upgrade it. It's really simple. And you can see the roof is actually um, very plain, which is uh, quite cool. And um, there's no vents or anything like that on it. But is there? Because we have this button that we can pop here and you can see it literally lifts up the side of the case over here. Now, then that reveals the roof. So I'll bring you up so that you can see a little bit better. Now, I'm th I know what you're thinking. You're thinking straight away, well, that looks horrible, Tom. But I'm not going to want to take that roof panel off. But if you have a look, oh, there's vents. But there's a metal top. Now, this is a completely enclosed metal top. It's not like the plastic covers that we used to get on the old cases. When that goes in like that and we push the sides down, it's just metal like everything else and it's totally sealed. But with a push of that button, we can pop it open and you now think to yourself, well, how do I get the vents then? Well, there are little clips all the way around the side that you need to prise off. I would personally say, get yourself a thin screwdriver. But if you do do that, then once it's off, the metal panel does have a bit in backing on it for um, sound deadening. But then you do get left with the uh, mesh top, which then can clip back in in exactly the same way that it was before. Give them a bit of a, a clip down. They can need um, a bit of, uh, not forcing, but persuading for the clips to go down at the same time. Then you have your um, large meshed area in the top. There is some dust filtering on it, but let's face it, it's the roof. It should be blowing out rather than in. In the roof, you have, it's an offset mount, so it sits away from the uh, motherboard tray, which is great. And we've got 120 millimeter fans bolted in here, but you can easily bolt 140s in as well. You can also, the 140 is the outside ones, but you can move the um, 120 millimeter ones out even further if you wish. You can get 360, 420, and any of the smaller combinations in the top as well. When we talk about the optical drive in a minute, if you do have a 360 in here or a 420, you can't use the full length of the optical bay. But if you've only got, say for argument's sake, a fan controller or one of the short devices, you'll with a 360, you'll still be able to use that. Um, I don't personally think it should have had the optical drive in it at all, but we will talk about that in a bit and probably in the conclusion when I have a bit of a rant about it anyway. So with this back up at a normal height, we can have a spin around the entirety of the case. Now I know what you're thinking straight away, what the bejesus is there, was, is it doing with a black front on it? And I would entirely agree. The white one's got a black front, the black one has a, a gunmetal front, and the gunmetal one has got a black front. Um, I personally think this should have just been um, uh, plain brushed silver at very best. Um, Gunmetal would even have looked better than the black. Uh, it just doesn't work. It ruins the fact it's a white case. Why would you buy a white case and then have a black front on it? It makes no sense. And I genuinely think 
it ruins the aesthetics of this case. I really like the white aesthetic to the point where if I was going to buy this, I would have to mod this. And when I finish this review, I may end up having a look at a couple of options of trying to get that black off or um, uh, modding some white over the top of it. So if there's something nailed in at the end of the video, you know I've been able to do it. And if there isn't, then you know I've broken it or ruined it. But anyway, door. It opens this way, but you can swap it. And it's very, very easy to just be able to flick the, uh, take these screws out, put it around the other way so you can have it open either way. Uh, again, it's got an optical bay in the uh, um, top. You can put a full length optical in it, but like I said, it will conflict if you run a 360 or a 420 radiator. If you've got a 360 in there, you will still be able to put a fan controller or something in there should you wish. And the uh, front uh, dust filters is very much the same as the roof. Uh, and you do get those uh, fans on the inside. Now again, you can see that we have uh, the, a plethora of mounting options in the front. You can put a, um, up to a 360 in the front, should you wish. You can put a 280 in there as well. It's not, you can't quite get a 420 in there, at least that's what they say on the manual, but you may be able to if you got, you know, a little bit handy and were a little bit brave. But one of the things I can't help but thinking is I really like the look of this mesh. And I mean, I really like the look of this mesh. Now I know the R6 is always meant to have had the door and the sound deadening and everything like that. But if they'd made this case with that mesh that just went right to the top, no optical bay, and I hate to admit it, no door, I think it would have looked the dog's danglies. Uh, so I think they've possibly missed a trick with this. Um, maybe it's something they can do like a, a, a slightly different revision with a different front and everything on it. I would actually like to buy that with my own money. Um, when we spin the case around and we have a look at the back, you've got 140 millimeter fan here. You've seen the 240 millimeter fans in the front. You can see that we've got a vertical uh, mount here. I'll talk to you more about that on the inside. That's gonna be an, uh, an additional option if you want the riser cable and stuff. Power supply uh, cable, uh, power supply cable. Power supply, normal, but you can flick it around. You also have the screws so that you can pull it out for easier servicing. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Normal layout for an ATX motherboard. Um, so it's all kind of standard around the back. One of the things I did forget to say when we were around the front, is if you do open the door, then you can grab at the bottom and there's a full length uh, dust filter. Uh, it's pretty much the same design as the ones that are on the front and stuff. And I mean, I'm not being funny. You look at that, that would have been an amazing case. I mean, you can literally see where my mind was. So you could, I mean, I'm not being funny. I, I just want to mod that now. So that would look the dogs. Oh God. Why didn't they do that? I mean, look at it, that's just sex. Well, I think so anyway. Anyway, maybe it's because I'm a bit deprived. Um, so when we try and put it back in down the bottom, that's gone straight in, nice. First try as well. Um, so that's all lovely, lovely. So you've seen all this around the back. Now you can undo the screws for the um, side panel, but you need to remember this is a tempered glass side panel as well. Normally when we would undo the, the panels like that, stuff would instantly start falling off. So this then makes me think that you have to pull the side panel because it's obviously, you know, latched in and that's why it's staying on. So you're going to spend ages doing that because you actually pull it off sideways. But I, there are little clips at the back, which I'll show you in a minute. But I'm, I, I kid you not, I love this side panel because it's probably one of the best um, tempered glass side panels I've had the pleasure of working with because it's on there, it's clipped in, it works. But you literally just give it a little pull and there are these tabs on the back of the door. Now all of this white around here is metal. So that's the glass is bonded to that metal. But as you can see, there are black latching bits here and here. I think I've pushed that other one inside. Um, but they literally, when that door's on there, it's on there. And it's the same for the other side as well. They literally, once it's on, it's on and it's, oh, it's just, yeah, it's good. So pull, pull, 
there we go, look, there's sound deadening, the bitumen, you can see the metal tab there, there's another one there, and it clips in, in the top and the bottom. And there is, it's, it just works, it's lovely. There is loads of room around the back as well. You can see we've got loads of room around the power supply. This is a 180 millimeter long power supply and you can see that we've got a good chunk of spare space. There's a good 25 millimeters of room around the back of the motherboard tray. You've got two solid state drive mounts here. There's a PWM splitter up here that you can connect. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's, uh, you've, yeah, you've got a PWM splitter, then, I'm just trying to see how many, because these are four pins, and then you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, three pin, but it's a PWM controller. So one end goes on your motherboard, and you can control it all with your motherboard. So this is just like a little mini hub. You do need to put uh, SATA power in there so that it's got a little bit of extra juice so it's not pulling too much on the motherboard, but it's a nice little addition. <sighs> right, deep breaths. The front panel, AR um, uh, cable, so for your power switch and your reset switch and the lights and everything, they're all actually braided. The um, USB cables, they're a real nice kind of black uh, color, but they're all nice and tidy and it does work, it's really nice. You can see that we've got grommet here and two more grommets at the top, so it keeps things all nice and tidy. And you've got plenty of tie downs to be able to put your case cables around and about. You can see that we've got all of these um, screw fittings down the side. I mean, I'll zoom you in a little bit. You can see that they go right the way to the top and that's literally because you can unscrew one and then there are little tabs and it goes in and it's, it's really simple to do and I should probably show you a close up of how easy it is. You undo the screw and it comes out. You can see that you've got a locating tab just here. You can see when it focuses. Anyway, so you pick where you want to go with it you push it in, you line it up, there's a little stop, you line it up with the screw hole, and then that's it. And you've got all of the options that you can basically put loads in here. I mean, you wouldn't be able to get them all this close, because they're the, you know you couldn't have them um, directly above each other. Um, there are a few extra slots down the bottom, as you can see, they get a bit closer, that could be where you put your solid state drives, but you'd need a good, gap. Now you can buy these, you can buy the mounts individually, but theoretically for mechanicals you could have, I reckon we'd have to take that one out, so we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, ten! 10. I could actually get my um, uh, server in this case. Hmm. So yeah, you can get 10 mechanicals in there in total, but there are lots of configs and around and abouts that you can do it as well. You can move them wherever you want. You could obviously, if you wanted to, keep the hard drives down low and leave the airflow going into the case if it was gonna be a big gaming rig or something. But then you've also got the water cooling options as well because you can put a radiator in the front and you can put um, uh, the radiators, as I said, in the roof. But then there's another trick that it does as well. So bear with me. So we've got a screw here, and there's another one down here. Now, what down here, sorry. So this panel here can actually be moved and it can be moved across. Now I'm gonna take this off. Now this is just a dress plate. So it's literally, it's a vanity plate basically. It's literally there just to cover up those holes. Now if you wanted to leave it here, you can actually, you can see that we've got hard drive mounts here. You could mount your hard drives there, but if we remove the other screws, well, that took a little longer than expected because it turns out I couldn't move the plate without taking the AI out of the roof. Not surprising, but might be something that'll help you in the meantime. So you can see the plate that was here, I've now put over there. There are two screws for it in the bottom and then two in the front. And when it is screwed in on this side, there's another two screws up here. And then you can move the whole thing over. And then when you have, you can still poke the cables through because they've left a little bit here so you can go, they come out the front and then they go in that side. And then when you see it on this side, you can also see that we can still put um, hard drives in with grommets on the back. So you can still put a good couple of um, mechanical hard drives in on the back and have the big open area in the front. Now the big open area in the front does, I mean, you could do it the other way around. You know, you wouldn't have to have it here and you could still put a radiator in the front if you wanted. 
but with it this way at least it opens it up and you can see things a little better now if you did want to um, put a radiator in the front then you are going to be relatively limited anyway because you can see we've got a normal um, 30 millimeter thick radiator in the front here and to be fair by the time if you were to try and put a 360 in the front and a 360 in the roof you're going to run into some end tank issues you could bump them all over and stuff like that but i think if this was my rig what i would end up doing would be having something like a 240 in the front and then um uh, a 360 in the roof or uh, maybe but the one thing i can't help but think here is we do have this big open chasm which does leave us with you know acres and acres of room i mean you could have push pull 80 millimeter thick radiator in here or you could have um loads of uh, like your uh reservoir mounted um here maybe there's a total of 170 millimeters of room here now i can't help but think that they should have had in the box a plate that covered this part up i get why they don't because if you wouldn't be able to have the two fans in the the front um but i don't think the optical bay should have been there anyway um but if you were to change the front fans to 240s then you could have had a plate in here and it would clean this line up um massively now this wouldn't be a difficult project for um you to do at home you could do it with some three millimeter acrylic you could even really do it with some plastic card if you really wanted to, which is um, like um, uh, 0.8 millimeters thin plastic and you can cut it with scissors and you could make yourself a cover for this very easily. And it would just be to clean the lines up. Um, but it's again, it's like the little niggly things with the, the, the mesh on the front. It's, it's just like, you know, little things that are annoying me, but this is probably a bigger deal to me as the fact that it's got a black front on it. But while we are in here, you can see that it does this, even though it's mounted in there, it does clean the lines up really well. They all fit together really nicely. It's so just at the end of the graphics card. It does, it's just, it just works. It's really, really pretty. But the other thing, what you can do, and I'm just out of shot, just moving around, grabbing it, is you can buy an, and it is an optional extra, but you can buy a Fractal um, riser cable. Now, as with all riser cables, you need to keep the lines very, very soft and careful. Don't right angle bend it because you'll break it. And if you do right angle, right angle bend it and you break it, that's it. You'll start getting boot issues. But what you can do is you can fit a graphics card in here. This screws into the base and you can put, um, vertically mount your graphics card. So with the riser fitted in the bottom, you can see around the back we've got the card. Now we would have had the cover on this, but the cover has to go in from the inside. So if you have a tall graphics card, like I have here, so an oversized one at the back, you can see there's gonna be no way I'm going to be able to get this in. And it must go in from the inside out, because if I hold it, you can see that the edges are slightly um, uh, beveled and raised and it can't go from the outside in. Anyway, everything's blurry because it's all zoomed in because let's face it, this is a totally, totally professional TTL video as always. But anyway, so that's in there. And now that I, can't, I have to stress, it is an optional extra, but it's just a couple of screws that you need to put in the bottom where they're actually like motherboard standoffs. Screw that in, make sure you keep a nice curve on the um, actual, and we've got no way of actually being able to see it without me taking you off old school, which I will do. But we have a really nice curve in there. So as long as you don't do any like 90 degree bends or anything like that, you should be fine. So you've got all of that. We're wiggling around on the camera. Okay, so conclusion time for the R6 then. First and foremost, that removable metal panel that covers the vents in the roof, masterstroke. So much better than the plastic covers that they used of old. And the fact that you can actually get the same type of mesh and venting in the roof that you get on the front as well and you can decide whether you want to have it, absolute masterstroke. Same with the uh, side panels. The fact they've got those extra clips on so when you undo the back, the panel doesn't just fall off brilliant and it shows they've put a lot of time and effort and thought 
into what's going on because that can be a bit difficult with the glass panels and if you've ever used one, you'll know what I'm on about. But with this, they're either on or they're off and they only come off when you give them a pull. If you're wondering about the black clip from before, I'd apparently knocked it and it was on the side. So it's now back on there and we've got both the black clips. Um, I'm assuming that they might um, be able to buy those uh, afterwards. I've not broken any yet, but I, you know, at some point, I think some people are going to probably be something you'll be able to go on the um, Fractal support site and they'll probably end up sending you some in the post for free. But I love the side panels, love the, the glass, the way that they've done this, epic. Things I don't really like. Well, for starters, the black front on a white case is just a no, an absolute no. Gun metal, I'd have moaned. Silver, I would have said it was a shame it was white, but I can understand why they went with silver. I think it should have been white. Now they're gonna say we can't anodize white. That's fine, don't put metal on there then. Just, you know, make it white, do you know what I mean? I don't know, I've got some um, uh, vinyl that I wanna try. So I'm gonna give that a go because I think it just ruins the front of the case straight away. The other thing is, is when you move that panel from the side, which I actually really like the fact that you can do that and it is modular in that way, but then it leaves the big hole. Because if I was gonna have an air-cooled rig like this, I'd wanna cover that up, so that's something else I have to do. And it's those two points really that have made me kind of pull back a bit because I think the Fractal R6 is a bit like the Fractal R4. I loved the R3, I liked the R4, I loved the R5. I think the R6 is one that I like. I don't think it's a case that I can love because, but the thing is, is with that, is sometimes cases can be too perfect. And for the majority of you guys out there at home, you just wanna buy a rig and use it, that's fine. But some of us, like me, I like a case that I can have a bit of a play with. It inspires me to do stuff. So this, for me, is that one that I like, the stuff that I want to do to it. So I would end up making a cover for the bottom so that I could cover up the, um, the gaping hole in the front, because I'd probably end up with a rad in it like this anyway. The other thing that I don't particularly like, and I know that there, you know, there are people out there that do like optical bays, but dear Lord, it's old tech now. Now I understand there are people out there that are screaming at the screen, but I still have digital, you know, physical media. Get yourself an external or something then for those few times that you need it. The only time I ever use a, an optical drive now is uh, if I've got a motherboard where it's not listed on the website yet, so it's when I'm doing NDA reviews and I need to get the drivers off of it. It's the only time and I have a little external thing that plugs in via USB for those few random times that I need it. And I think that for those few random times that I need it, I can put up with the extra bit of hassle of plugging a USB in than having that ruining the front of the case because in all honesty, if that mesh had gone all the way up the front of the case, like I showed you, like here, if they had made that, then this case would have been on my desk to the point where I've literally been trying to work out how I can cut this and mod this and try and sort the front out so that it's not too blatant. I've just ripped everything off the front, but it's, it's a very nice design. I've always liked their uh, mesh anyway. If you've not seen my 60 terabyte home server, uh, not for the website, it's literally just the server that I have at home for all my files and stuff, it's like a really posh NAS. I modded all the front of that case and I have 10 hard drives in it and stuff. So this does, you know, has the possibility of ticking a lot of boxes for me. Um, and like I said, I do like it. And it's just a, such a shame that those few minor little oversights have kind of tainted what was otherwise an amazing case. And it, it's a weird one because our review structure now, I don't think this is a silver. I genuinely don't. Like if we had kept the gold, silver, bronze, I don't think this is a silver. It would have been a gold case. But with our, our review structure at the moment, it means that this is an OC3D approved case, but it's when we start talking about the OC3D enthusiast that I'm like, I'm not sure that it's quite worthy of that because the only way you could live with that gaping hole in the front is if you knew that you were going to be moving the panel over and you were gonna put a full length radiator in the front. So, you know, if you're thinking about that, then you, this isn't going to bother you. 
But if you're going to be like the majority of people out there, they're going to end up with an AIO in there if it's moved over, or you're going to end up having to keep it, you know, over this side just to kind of conceal that part. So you kind of need to make your own mind up. So I'm going to give you, I'm not going to give Fractal 2 awards because the award that I'm going to give it is my tripods undoing itself and kind of moving all over the place. The award that I'm going to give it is the OC3D approved. But if that doesn't bother you and that doesn't bother you, then maybe to you it would be worth an enthusiast. I'm not so sure though. I think with a few um, uh, hours spent of a weekend trying to put things right, tailoring it to your own needs better, or if I was gonna do it, tailoring it to my own needs better, I could make it a much nicer case. Now, if you've ever seen the case that I've built for my racing rig, it pretty much looks like this. Genuinely, my racing rig case, and I won't mention the brand because I had to kind of chop the insides out of it, but it pretty much looks like this without that gaping hole. So it does, this does talk to me. This is a design that I like. It just needs a little bit more polish. Um, so I think the Fractal R7, which is probably going to be like 18 months away, because let's face it, they're never instant. I think that case will fix all of these problems. But in the meantime, it's going to take uh, either you not caring or a modder to get the best from it. So that's a very honest review. And then the, the end is kind of tinted with negativity, but it's just because I think that these two things are quite a big deal to me and it would wind me up. If it doesn't wind you up, then ignore me and go and spend 119 quid on buying it. Because when we come down to that point, if, the, if it doesn't annoy you, then for that, this sort of money, it's actually an, an amazing case. If you think about when they, um, they upgraded the S340 to tempered glass, it went from like 65 quid to 95 quid. If you think about the fact all of the extra radiator space that you get in this, the glass, the build quality, more size, more airflow, do you know what I mean? Fan options, all of that sort of stuff. For 25 quid extra, this is a bit of a bargain if I'm honest. Thank <laughs> you.